Warning. The message you are about to hear are the views of the Oklahoma Tomcat and are not supported by the government. Agreeing with this message could cause you to be targeted by the government, government agencies, and liberal advocates. You have been warned. If you like your health care plan, you'll be able to keep your health care plan. How's everyone doing? Things are going pretty good uh, here uh, for me and my family. So, very short weekend, and uh, I had to work on Saturday. It was only half a day, but you know how it goes. Anytime you have to work, even if it's a few hours, it feels like uh, the that's it of the day. You know, you didn't have a day off. But I also did quite a bit of work at the house. I ended up uh, getting this uh, big rolling toolbox for $12. The guy was going to throw it out, and so I ended up buying it. And it, it's great because uh, I got it home and I was able to clean off the porch, which is also my... Uh, uh, work area too, where I have all my tools and stuff, different projects going on. Got that cleaned off, got the toolbox cleaned out. Actually, I didn't clean out the toolbox. Uh, I have to give credit where credit's due. My eight-year-old daughter, she ended up cleaning out the toolbox, and she helped out quite a bit with cleaning the porch and helping me go through all the tools. Uh, she's a big helper for me. <laughs> uh, she she loves helping me out anytime I have uh, any type of uh, project going on. She hates cleaning her room, but she sure loves uh, helping me out. <laughs> anyway, so uh, I did that, got a little bit of wood done. Uh, Sunday ended up raining, so, you know, I was able to do quite a bit there until it started raining. I got quite a bit to talk about today. Um, as y'all probably noticed, my introductory song, um, has changed. Um, that song is The Dirty Uncles, and the name is, uh, that's the name of the group, and the name of the song is Face of the New Democracy, which I'll play the full song here in a little bit, and talk about The Dirty Uncles and, uh, how I got to, uh, find out about them. Uh, quite interesting story. Um, I did something I normally don't do, which I will uh, explain that to people because uh, when I tell you how I came across the Dirty Uncles, and I don't want people to start flooding my Twitter page. I mean, you, of course, you can tweet me anything you want, <laughs> uh, but I'll go more into that uh, in a little bit here. Also, we had another shooting where an off-duty sheriff uh, shot a black woman. Um, seems like any time a white person shoots a black person, it's going to make national news now. But, um, whereas I kind of... Uh, uh, sympathize in a different way with the New York shooting, and uh, I, I really don't sympathize with the woman that was shot uh, in this case, but uh, just like the Ferguson, I'm sorry, you know, you break the law, you try to kill a police officer, you know, your hands aren't clean, okay, and I'll go more into that even further later on in the show. Um, but first let me talk about, oh, and I will get further into these shootings and how I feel about this 
sudden thing where criminals uh, should be able to commit crimes without any expectation, uh, without being expecting to be killed. Okay, and I'm, I'm going to really lay out my full emotions on this, how I feel about it, because it, it's it's. Our society is going crazy. It, it really is. But first, let me talk a little bit about uh, the Dirty Uncles. Um, one afternoon, I got this tweet um, saying, you know, promoting a, a song, you know, for me to listen to it, and then if I like to retweet it. And so forth. Now, <laughs> I'm going to let people know that normally I, when I see these tweets, I, I get them every once in a while. When I see them, I generally don't even mess with them. I ignore them. Okay? It's uh, nothing to be, you know, it's, it's not me being mean or, you know, um, ignoring anyone or anything like that. I really do try to pay attention to every tweet I get. Um and I do get quite a few of them. But my life is busy, okay? I really don't have time to listen to uh, every song that people tweet to me and things like that. You know, I listen to iHeartRadio. I listen to uh, the local radio stations, you know, to find out new songs coming out and stuff like that. I, I really know that there are people out there, talented people out there, you know, really trying to get started and uh, with a band. And I know it's very difficult uh, in the music industry and in uh, uh, even any type of uh, acting, music, or anything like that. It's very hard to get, uh, you know, your foot in the door. And I really respect it, you know, the people who really try to show their talent and na their natural talent. You know, it's like I've said many times, you know, people have, everyone has a natural born talent. And we need to discover what that talent is and really go for it. Um, but this tweet really caught my eye. As those of you who follow my... Uh, uh, blogs and when I was on political TNT radio, um, no, and those that work with me, you know, no, I am really big into politics and uh, talk about a lot. And the song that they tweeted to me <laughs> was a good one because it, it caught my eye real immediately. And I had to listen to it. In fact, I, I replied to their tweet and said, thank you, I'll, I'll listen to it when I get home. Well, I didn't even make it home before I listened to it. You know, as soon as I got the car parked and was about to go in the store, I was like, let me take a listen to this real, you know, for a minute. The name was of the song is the one you heard, or the introductory anyway, of, uh, part of the song. They heard at the beginning of the show, uh, face of uh, the new uh, democracy, and then the I forget exactly what the tweet said, but it was basically uh, uh, a southern rock uh, band with a political message, or a southern southern rock song with a political message. But anyway, eye catcher, very good tweet. Okay, to a, to a per, the, the right person to uh, listen to it. When I heard it, I loved it immediately. Not just because of the political message that was in it, but the the guitars and the you know, I'm a big guitar person. You know, I I grew up in with rock and roll in the '80s, and uh, and which really caught my attention when I listened to the song because, you know, I could hear that 80s beat in it, you know, the, the guitars and everything and the way they sang. This group is very, very talented. I see them going very, very far. And 
when I got their, uh, when I heard the song, I, I tweeted them right back. I said, that's great music. I, and I did retweet their message, you know, but their tweet, but I also added another tweet, you know, letting my, uh, people follow me know, and Facebook, because all my tweets go to Facebook too, but letting everyone that follows me and friends me, you know, know, hey, this is great, listen to this song, so, and I sent them a private message asking for permission to play their, that introductory song you heard, uh, that song as my introductory and ending, and also let them know that, you know, I'll also play at their other songs and promote them. Uh, but I'm not promoting them uh, I'm uh, for money or anything like that. In fact, I'm not getting paid for this at all. I'm doing it because I really, really think this is a very talented group of people, and I, uh, I love their songs. Uh, they sent me five songs, which I will be playing in in various uh, blogs, including this one here. Um, but they, uh, they're great. I read up a little bit on uh, the Dirty Uncles. I, I found out real quick what was that really attracts me to their music, and that is because they grew up in, uh, in rock and roll in the 80s. You know, what the Dirty Uncles is, I, I'm going to go through this real briefly because uh, I'm also going to give you their uh, website address, I mean their website so that you can read more up on, about them and even listen to all the, you know, the songs they have on their uh, website. But what, the, what it is, five, uh, in the band there's five members. And they grew up to, together uh, in uh, Lake Jackson, Texas. And the members are Mark Tracy. Uh, he uh, is a multi-instrumentalist. Uh, Kyle Phillips, who is on the drums. Eric Day, he's on the keyboard. Lance Morgan plays the guitar, and Joey uh, Resendis uh, plays electric guitar. Three of them uh, was in one band, and the other two uh, were founding members of another band. All five of them uh, left uh, Lake Jackson at, right after high school, started their own careers and family and all that good stuff, you know. But amazingly, when, when they moved away, they ended up getting back together. I say amazingly because I know, unfortunately, most of us, when we leave after high school, you know, that's pretty much it. Uh, And the way they got back together is that uh, two of them, or actually, it's, I'm sorry, it's three of them, uh, Kyle, Lance, and Eric, end up uh, going to South Texas uh, Rock Fest. They reliving their old memories of the music they grew up with, which I can relate to that. The number of times I uh, will listen to songs that I've uh, grown up. And uh, short, long story short, they end up, uh, uh, they were so moved by that, the songs and stuff like that, that they end up uh, uh, forming uh, the band uh, Dirty Uncles. But, uh, I mean, there's more detail to the and you can go to their uh, website, which is the Dirty Uncles, uh, dot com. And at the end of the uh, this blog, you can uh, I will have it posted for you. Actually, it's posted right now. If you're uh, watching the video, but they, they, it's very good music. I, I highly recommend that. 
uh, y'all listen to it. You can download their songs and, uh, in the, cr uh, closing credits, I will reveal all the, uh, uh, websites, uh, where you can find their music and even, uh, follow them on Twitter. But, uh, here is, uh, one, uh, the full song, the introductory song that you heard. I'll play the, uh, whole song right now. And then, uh, I will also play one of their, uh, songs. Oh, one song that I really, really liked, uh, was Rio Grande, which that one there I'll play, uh, right after this next song. If you like your health care plan, you'll be able to keep your health care plan. This is the most transparent administration in history. Not even a smidgen of corruption. Fact is, we had four dead Americans. What difference at this point does it make? If you've got a business, you didn't build that. Just to admit I'm 
that was a great song, wasn't it? I mean, not just the message behind it, but but the sa- their singing is great. I, I don't really know how to describe it. I mean, like I've said before, I grew up in rock and roll, and I, I love guitars. That was a big thing when uh, in my school was guitars. I mean, yeah, the drumming. Uh, my wife, she loves drums, and there were people in our in our school that loved drums and stuff like that. But you know, guitars was the big thing, and I, I love the the sound of their uh, of the guitars in that song. But that there was the uh, dirty uh, uncles and uh, the face of uh, of the new uh, democracy. This next one, like I said, is another one I really enjoyed uh, listening to, and uh, the name of uh, this next song is Rio Grande, and like I said, at, at the end of the uh, blog in the credits, I will have uh, the name of the songs and the name of the group and their website, but enjoy this uh, next song, and uh, and then after this next song, uh, we'll take a short break, and I'll uh, talk a little bit about the, uh, riots that's been going on and also how I feel about this whole police shooting thing. And you're not going to believe, uh, what the protesters have been saying, uh, in both, uh, New York City and, uh, D.C., uh, uh, rally. But enjoy this next song.
I'm telling you, if you don't like that those songs, you're a commie. You have to be. <laughs> you can't be an American. But uh, in all seriousness, uh, that was the uh, that was the Dirty Uncles. And uh, if you want to look them up, uh, if you're listening to the audio version of uh, of this uh, uh, blog. That, uh, that is, uh, give me one second, I'm going to, uh, give you the website address, I'm going to, I'm going to have to spell it out because Uncles is, it's The Dirty Uncles, that's T-H-E-D-I-R-T-Y-U-N-K-U-L-S, yeah, they spelt it a little different, (laughs) dot com. Uh, that there will take you to their website uh, where you can read more about the band. Uh, they also have their music posted there. They have uh, videos and photos. Um, that way so you uh, you can enjoy their um, music too. I, I, I do highly recommend uh, their songs if you love the Southern Rock. But we're going to take a little break, and I'll uh, be back right after these short messages. Hello, I'm Paul, a student at Hillsdale College. Here is my professor, Dr. Larry Arn, on the separation of church and state. America's founders believed in the separation of church and state, in that the country was not to have an official religion or an official sect. But that did not mean that government was to be hostile to religion, or even indifferent to religion, as many today argue. In fact, America's founding document, the Declaration of Independence, includes both a reference to God as the author of the laws of nature, and a confident assertion that human beings are endowed by their Creator with certain inalienable rights. Far from being hostile or indifferent to religion, America's founders understood the theology of the Declaration to be an essential part of the education of citizens. This Constitution Minute was brought to you by Hillsdale College. To join the national conversation on the Constitution, go to constitutionminute.org. Eddie Fogarty was driving his bulldozer through a peat field in Ireland when his life changed forever. Without meaning to, his tractor had unearthed an old leather-bound book. Eddie leaped into the muck and started calling for help, realizing that this was an incredible find. When the experts finished their examination, they concluded the book was actually a 1,200-year-old Psalter, and it's one of the rarest samples ever found to date. For many years, academics assumed the Irish had Christian texts dating far in the past. Now they had proof. When I first heard this story, I was struck with a sense of irony. One of my favorite psalms of all time is Psalm 40, verse 2. He lifted me out of the slimy pit, out of the mud and mire. He set my feet on a rock and gave me a firm place to stand. This book of psalms containing this passage about being lifted out of the muck was found buried in a dirty peat bog, and it was a miracle that the elements hadn't destroyed this ancient text. But there is a similar irony in Christ's involvement with us that leads to truly unexpected, even miraculous results in our lives. Christ, our King of Kings, is willing to get his hands dirty with our messes. There's nothing too dark in our lives that he cannot work through or redeem. He's not afraid of digging through the muck and the mire to meet us where we are. And that's why he came to us, to find and perfect his beloved. There's really nothing too difficult, too hopeless, or too complicated for Jesus. When we call out for help, he is faithful to answer and ready to join us in our struggle and strong enough to lift us out of the pit. He has come to undo what evil has done and bring us back into communion with our Father, cleansed and renewed. I'm Joseph Tkach, speaking of life. You are 
listening to the most awesome daddy in the world, my daddy, the Oklahoma Tomcat. <laughs> Welcome back. That there was my uh, daughter. Uh, my wife set her up uh, to say that. But welcome back. Um, as I've said before, I've got uh, there's so much has been going on. I've got so many different blogs I need to start doing. I, I'm thinking I need to do these blogs a little bit more often because there's so much com- going on. Um, one of the things I want to say real quick is about this uh, $1.1 trillion dollar uh, spending uh, budget that was passed by both the House and the Senate, by both the Democrats and the Republicans. Um, it really does prove something that I've been saying a lot a long time. The GOP is liberal. They are not conservative. Um I don't know how long they've been liberal. It's been a long time. Ever since I've followed politics, they've been liberal. If, if y'all remember, the GOP did not like Reagan. They didn't. By all means, uh, by all... Uh, Reagan would should not have been elected if it was up to the GOP. Um... And Reagan is the most conservative in my time. Now, I know he's he, some of the things he's done was, you know, on the liberal side, but, you know, he was also dealing with a very liberal Congress. And he was in a liberal political party known as the GOP. But that's $1.1 trillion dollars budget that was passed goes to even further prove my point. The GOP is liberal. The party is. Now, I know we got a handful of conservatives in there, but they are far and few between. You know, and my hopes in the past was that the conservatives would take over the GOP. And I give people like Ted Cruz and even my uh, senators and congressmen credit. You know, they they are really trying. But they've got uphill battle. They really need our help. And how can we help start electing conservatives? It's time to wake up. I mean, how many times do we have to go through this before people start waking up? One of the problems I feel we are having is that we got too many statists voting. Too many people that are part of the statist uh, religion. And yeah, I, I call it, I, I, I say statism is a religious belief. Their gods are the wa- people in Washington, D.C. And I'm going to do a blog on the, I mean, when I, when I discuss about why I say statism is a religious belief, it, it really does take a, a long time time, pretty much a whole blog to do, to go through the list. I did it when uh, I was a co-host on Political TNT, Uh, but I'm also going to uh, give that blog, uh, do that show here on uh, my video blogs. But, you know, to put it real brief, you know, the biggest part reason I say that's a religious belief is because of the faith you need to believe in the federal government, that they're out to save you, that everything they do is for you. 
That takes a lot of faith when you look at the history of government. And then when you look at world history, oh boy, you know, that, that takes so much faith. I don't have that much faith. You know, and I always tell people that if Christians had as much faith in God as liberals have in the government, Christians would be unstoppable, you know? Because, I mean, faith does a lot. But this $1.1 trillion spending bill has so much pork in it and so much favors that it's ridiculous. We are in debt. And I'm sorry, but bills, when, when Congress passes a, a bill, what's in that bill should only be what that bill is about. There is so much in this spending bill that has nothing to do with spending. And while some of it I agree with that we should be doing, that's nothing related to spending. It should be in a separate bill voted on separate issue, you know, voted separately. We, and then, come on people, we are in debt. How much further do we need to go in debt? How much further can we go in debt? What? Money works the same way no matter who you are or what you are. Us as individuals, we need to budget our finances. Okay? If we don't, we go into debt. If we don't control our money, if we're not good stewards over our money, we will go in debt. And when you're in debt, you're a slave to your creditor. Basically, you end up working just to pay off your debts. And then before you know it, you're living paycheck to paycheck. And then eventually, if you do not get that caught up, pretty much your whole check goes to paying off your... Uh, creditors. And I know people who are like that, who do that. Basically, their paycheck goes straight from their employer, straight to paying off their bills. What a way to live. Then they need to borrow more money just to eat. And then if it gets too far, you go bankrupt. And for some, that's a relief, which is sad. Same thing with companies. Now, if a company goes bankrupt, you know, well, they can file for two separate, two different types of bankruptcy. But one of them, they end up losing their business. And I personally know people who've done that, had, a, had their own business and end up losing it. Then they end up becoming an employer uh, employee for somebody else. <laughs> you want to talk about slavery, that's really something, huh? Same thing with countries. Study world history. What happens to countries when they, when financially they can't run anymore. The bad thing with countries is it affects everyone in that country. That's you and me. We need to get our debt, national debt, under control. And we, as voters, can stop this. Our elected officials are acting like teenagers with an unlimited, their parents' unlimited credit card. And that's our money. And it does affect us. You may not feel it now, but you will. Your kids will. And what kind of love are we showing to our children 
when we are borrowing their money, because basically that's what we're doing now, we don't have money ourselves. We have none. It's just like a parent going and opening a uh, account in their child's with their child's social security number. The child will end up in debt before he even starts work. And we we need to get the Republican Party under control. I mean, they're they're really trying to out Democrat the Democrats, out liberal the Democrats. But either that or get the Libertarian Party in power. That's actually something I would like to see. We already know the Republicans and the Democrats can fail, uh, have failed. Let's give the Libertarians a try, huh? They can get elected, you know. All it requires is that we vote for them. That's all it requires. This whole idea that they can't get elected because they don't raise enough money. or How many of you go to the voting booth and pull the trigger for the person with the most money? How many of you do that? If you do that, stop voting. How many of you go to the voting booth and vote for someone just because they had good commercials? If you do that, stop voting. Something we need to do in the meantime is go down the list of everyone who uh, voted for the $1.1 trillion uh, dollar, uh, spending bill. And if your elected official voted for this, I urge you to contact them and ask them why. There's another issue with this spending bill that upsets me that it, that any of them voted for it. And that is that they are endorsing lawless, lawlessness. They're funding it. How many of you would fund a criminal activity? I know I wouldn't, because if you're, <coughs> excuse me, if you're funding a lawless activity, what you are doing is you're a participant in it. You're saying it's a, you're you're agreeing with it. And that is, in in my eyes, that makes you. A criminal. You are just as bad as the person who actually did the crime. And in, in a legal sense, that is also what uh, law enforcement, the way judges look at it, courts look at it. That's what these guys did. They funded a lawless activity, and that is the president changing the law, immigration law. And he did change the immigration law. Because these illegal immigrants now can work in the United States, or will be able to once he signs up. Well, actually, I... I and see, that's another thing. It's not even an executive order. He didn't even make an executive order. He just said, boom, you know, you're here illegally. This is the way it works now. We changed the whole process. And it's not just that he's not prose- prosecuting them, I mean, which the president can do. I mean, and that's been done, you know, many times is, you know, the president will say, well, you know, we're not going to prosecute uh, these groups of people, you know, that are here, here illegally. I mean, prosecutors, 
do that throughout the United States. You know, they'll pick and choose which laws they enforce. And they have that, uh, that legal, uh, the legal ability to do that. That, that's lawful. They, they don't prosecute every crime that goes on. No prosecutor does that. But, the president actually changed the law <laughs> completely and made it made it to where the illegal activity of coming in this country uh, illegally is now I guess legal I don't know even know what you call this but anyway here here's the Senate vote is that 56 of your senator our senators said that what the president is doing is okay in their, to them. 56 of them. 40 of them said, no, it ain't. They, they didn't fund it. Well, I can't say all 40 said, no, it ain't. There's also Democrats that didn't vote for this bill for other reasons, which I disagree with. But, and four of them didn't vote. And that's just, in, in my view, that's just unacceptable. The Republicans, Alexander from Tennessee, Ayot from New Hampshire. I'm not going to go through this whole list. You, you can go on the internet and find this list. Uh, I went on the Senate's website. Um their roll call list for the, uh, the bill. You can just do a search and find it. There's 56 of them that said yes. Uh, I'm trying to see where... Alabama, you did good. Two of your senators uh, said no. But that, that's where I stand on this. I mean, please, please, please con find out if your senator voted for this. Find out if your congressman or your uh, representative voted for this and contact them and let them know how disappointed you are. Of course, if they're going out, if they're leaving office anyway, there's not much you can do. Uh, timing of this was very poor, I think. Uh, during a lame duck session. Now, how about these riots going on? Uh, these protests. Now, as I've said in a previous blog, peaceful protests, I'm all for. Even if I disagree your position on it. If you're protesting peacefully, that is what the Constitution is there to do. Protect you. Uh, give you that right to be able to protest. You're angry. But once that protest becomes violent, you lost all my support, and I'm hoping you get caught, and that you get arrested, and I will not feel one bit uh, sympathetic with, for you. Unlike, you know, even if I disagree with you, if you're peacefully protesting and you get locked up, then, you know, I'm behind you. You know, you have the right to protest. But that protest must be peaceful. And it must not injure in any way, shape, or form your neighbor. Your neighbor being anyone. Or a hum another human. Blocking the roads is not a peaceful protest. You are hurting your neighbor. People have to get to work. Someone who is just as poor as you are probably needs to get to work and make money. Not to mention, if someone needs to get to a hospital or anything, you're hindering that. Do not block the roads. Something else I've found that happened apparently yesterday. 
protesters chanting these words. Now, these aren't my words. Protesters are chanting these words. What do we want? Dead cops. When do we want them? Now. That is pure hatred. Those who are chanting that are just as bad as any cop that has killed innocent people. Don't forget, in Ferguson, the stepdad of Mr. Brown said, burn this beep down. And what happened? Your words can cause great damage. Telling people you want the cops dead is hate. And uh, let me tell you something. If police officers start getting killed, those that chanted this, that police officer's blood is on your hands. That is, uh, that is just messed up. And these are liberals, the ones who claim they love people and want peace. The ones that hate guns because guns kill. I'll tell you something, these protests that have been going around, and this, and this happened in New York too. I just got done doing a blog saying, you know, that I am so glad to see New York protesters overall showing love to their neighbor. Now you're not. Because guess what? Those police officers are your neighbors. And most police officers are good people. Chanting that you want the cops killed. Wow. Wow. I'll tell you something, liberals can't say nothing about Republicans, you know, when it comes to hate. Because you guys are showing a lot of hate. Lots of hate. Over a few chosen so-called police killings. I mean, yeah, the police did kill some people, but those people's the hands were not clean that were killed. You know, and I'm sorry, if you think you can commit a crime and not have, you know, uh, something bad come to, come out on you, you're living in a fairy tale land. If you commit a crime, then there is a very good chance that you could end up killed or murdered during that. I mean, killed or uh, hurt during that crime. People, we all have choices we have to make. And you're free to make whatever choices you want. But you are not free from the consequences of those choices. If you choose to participate in a crime, there is a good chance it's not going to end well for you. And it shouldn't. Now, I'm not advocating that everyone who commits a crime gets killed. You know, there are crimes that, no, you shouldn't get killed. If you cooperate with the police, that is. So far, out of all these police killings that have been put in the spotlight. Now, I'm not saying police are... <clears throat> angels, by no means they're not. There's there's bad people in every line of work out there. And police are not exempt from that. But <laughs> you liberals are choosing the bad, uh, you know, the wrong thing. I don't know. What is it with that? I mean, there are bad police officers out there. But so far, everyone that's been made national news have not been very good examples of that. 
In fact, I'm starting to wonder, are there bad police officers out there? Because the liberals have not chosen situations where a police officer shot an innocent person on purpose. Now, I've seen some videos on YouTube where, you know, a police officer accidentally shot someone, unfortunately, and very tragic uh, situation, but in fact, I posted one of them just to show, yeah, you know, police shooting innocent people do happen, but even that wasn't a good example of a bad police officer, because the police officer ended up crying, you know, but here's another one that just recently been brought to my attention, Walmart security guard shoots shoplifting ma- mother dead in parking lot as she tries to escape with two young children. Now, the headline there sounds terrible, doesn't it? Hmm. Yeah. I mean, getting shot just because you shoplifted? Come on. You know. Now, it turns out this uh, security guard was an off-duty sheriff deputy, which, of course, what made it news. Because he wasn't just a security guard, he was a off-duty sheriff, right? Police are bad. But it turns out this 27-year-old mother of two uh, shoplifted uh, some items. Uh, Shelly Frey. Now, the security guard did confront her and she went ahead and laid out the, some of the items. The smaller items. Now, she had two other people with, uh, adults with her to, as accomplices. And they brought out, you know, yeah, we shoplifted these, you know. But they were hiding back some other stuff. And when the security guard uh, confronted them, Shelly Frey, now, notice it said, with two young children. These two children her children. She brought them with her and committed this crime with those children with her. That brings up a whole nother issue with me, which really gets my blood boiling. Now, she was in the car and the the security guard got between her door and the uh, the driver's seat. And she decides she's going to back up, you know, with the security guard in the door. Well, the security guard ended up shooting her. Um, now, the security guard, I'm going to say, will say that the security guard was in the clear and in no danger when he shot the fire, uh, shot the gun. Okay. Which that there, I do like, uh, you know, the timing was probably bad. You didn't, don't need to be shooting someone once you're in the clear license plate number, your, your police officer, you should be able to read those license plate numbers real quick and, you know, be able to report it and get uh, police to uh, pull her over. But he decided to go ahead and shoot and shot her in the neck. And she did have two children with her. People, she did not have clean hands. She attempted to kill a uh, security guard, and and he was an off-duty sheriff. She attempted to kill him with her car. That that there is grounds for you know. I mean, granted, you know, I, I wouldn't have shot the fires uh, myself after all was said and done, and I'm no longer in danger, but. He did. Sorry. I'm, I'm not really feeling sorry for her. Now, here's another issue about this woman. And what's funny is in the story, her dad says that she was a loving mom. No, she wasn't. What loving mom brings children with them when they're committing a crime? As I've said before, if you're committing a crime, you are taking a chance that you're going to end up dead or hurt. 
Why do you bring your children with you? What mother does that? I'll tell you what mother does that. A hateful mom. I used to be a child advocate. Let me tell you something. If she did not uh, end up dying, I'd be all over the government taking her children away from her. And, I, and I'm not for big government at all. And I <laughs> taking children away from their parents is an extreme thing. But I would do it. Because she obviously hates her children. I mean, oh, what mom does that? Uh, it just drives me nuts. I can't imagine taking my children with me when I'm about to commit a crime. And if I have my children with me and that little thing comes to mind saying, hey, let's commit this crime, I'd be like, I'd just have to look at my children and say, no, I can't do it right now. Granted, I, you know, I'm not someone who commits crimes, but I, I just can't imagine even thinking of doing it when I have my children with me. If I did commit crimes, if I, if I, even shoplifting, I would not be able to do it with my children near me. Number one, putting their life in danger. And number two, teaching them to be a criminal. Because your children do look at you and emulate you. You are a role model, whether you like it or not. If you are a parent, you're a role model. And the people <coughs> that actually look at the story and feel bad about her, you know, her. I mean, I, I'm sorry. I don't like to see anyone lose their life, especially when they got their children around. But I don't blame the law enforcement or the security guard or the person who's protecting your property for doing for shooting them. I mean, yeah, go up and try to stop him at first, which the security guard did. She was not shot for shoplifting. Let me make that clear right now. She was shot because she attempted to kill the guy. And I've got these people that... I, I hear these people... These bleeding heart liberals uh, criticizing the security guard and not her. She had her children with her and she went and committed a crime in front of her children. And then she attempted to kill someone in front of her children. Stop it, people. If you want to show the world bad, bad police officers, find a story where there was a bad police officer where the person was innocent of any crime. Show those stories. I'll join you. I'll be right by your side then. I'll be holding up the banner. Hands up. Don't shoot. If that was the case. I'll blog about it. I'll advertise it. I know there's stories out there. Find one. Why are you guys always choosing the one where the person shot was a criminal? Why? There are bad police officers. If you want to demonize police officers, find an innocent person who was killed by one. Purposely killed by one, not an accident. 
find some, a story where there was an innocent person who got beat up by a police officer. Someone who surrendered to the police officer, didn't do no crime, had their hands up, was handcuffed and then beaten. Can liberals find one? If you want it to be about racism, find where there was a case of actual racism. Where the person, the black person was innocent, <coughs> hand up, and was either shot or beaten. I know racism is out there. I know for a fact it's out there. But find a story. If I mean, if this is really what you guys want, find a story where there was blatant racism. Where beyond a shadow of doubt, stop calling people racist when there's no case at all for racism. Where there's no proof of it. Liberals are the most judgmental people around, aren't they? I mean, it, cruel judging. I mean, it, man, if you're in the crosshairs of a liberal, you're going to be plastered throughout the world. And falsely so, too. People, that's hate. If you do that, you're hateful. And I'll call you on it. This is Oklahoma Tomcat. Take care. God bless. Merry Christmas to everyone. This is the most transparent administration in history. Not even a smidgen of corruption. Fact is, we had four dead Americans. What difference at this point does it make? If you've got a business, you didn't build that.